There are two types of people in the world. Those who are card players and those who play games with cards. Two completely different types of people, right? My wife, she plays games with cards. She loves Uno, Skipbo, Phase 10. Uh, she likes playing games with cards. Me, I'm a card player. I like playing cards, right? I, I like the math. I like keeping track of what's been played and what's still uh, out there. I like the different strategies. Um, Euchre is my favorite game. Not a lot of people around here play it, um, but I, I like lots of card games. Spades, hearts, rummy, rook, if you've ever heard of that. Uh, I even like poker games like uh, five card draw, blackjack, Texas Hold'em. I just, I like playing cards. Now, I don't like gambling for money. Uh, I just, I don't like the feeling that happens inside me when I do that. And I, I know some people do, and that's okay. I'm not passing any judgment there. But uh, I learned early on, I think uh, we were teenagers, and me and my brother and a couple friends, and we were playing pool and playing cards, and we decided to bet on it just to make it more interesting, as they say. And we bet $2, which is nothing. Although when you're a teenager, that seems significant uh, 30 plus years ago. Anyways, I did not like the feeling that I had the whole time. All the fun was gone for me. And now it's like, oh, I have to win this. I don't want to lose my $2. So I'm glad I learned early on when the cost was very low that I don't like to gamble. But I do like the challenge and the personal satisfaction that comes from winning and playing. So you could say I'm a card player, not a gambler. But when we think of gambling and we think about cards, we end up thinking about what often? Vegas, right? We think about Vegas and the gambling that happens there. And uh, if you talk to someone that likes to gamble, they like to go to the casino uh, to gamble, most of them will say that they think they can win because they have a system. Right? They, they've, you, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? They've read a book about the correct way to play, or they've kind of perfected their system of when to play, and you know, when to, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, right? <laughs> when to play cards, or, you know, do you hit on this, a soft 16, do you hold back? Right? They got their system down, and they think if they just play their system, that they're going to be able to win. And so uh, they have faith that if they just follow their system and do just the right things, play just the right way, that they're gonna win. They think I can beat the dealer, my system will help me play better than the rest of these people, and I can win. Uh, and if you've ever gone to play, there's lots of people that want to help you. If you say, well, I don't really know, I'm kind of new. Everyone at the table is going to try to help you out. They want to give you their system and try to teach you. I used to uh, play a poker. It was actually kind of a ministry. Uh, Tiffany never believed that, but it was. And uh, down in Rolla, I'll talk about that sometime, actually. Um, but there was a guy that used to sit at the table, and he found out I was kind of a new guy. Uh, he always wanted to try to teach me how to play. And he's telling me his system, oh, preacher, don't play that. No, that's the wrong card to play right now, you know, and trying to tell me his system. And ironically, I only saw him at the final table one time in all the years that I played there. So his system didn't really uh, work that well. But my point, there is a point in all of this, and that's this, that how people view Vegas is often how they view their faith in God. And they, they prayed and asked God for something and, and they, they got what they asked for. And so they think, oh, oh, how did I do that? How did I make that work? Let's see, I, I went to church three Sundays in a row and, and I prayed two times and then God answered my prayer. So next time I, I want this thing from God, I want him to do something for me. I just gotta make sure I go to church three Sundays in a row, right? And make sure that I'm praying before each meal. Um, so some people, we develop a, a system or a formula that they use for their faith, and they think that that's how they're going to get God to answer their prayers. But God doesn't work like that. And that's not really faith at all, is it? That's just wishful thinking. We all have a faith system, a system of beliefs on how we think things work in the world and how God works uh, in the world and, and with us. And we make decisions and build our life around these beliefs. These core beliefs are our foundation of our faith. And this foundation is what we lean against to support our life. But what happens if our foundation of faith isn't solid? If the foundation moves when uh, life bumps into our faith, 
then our faith might collapse kind of like a house of cards that gets bumped, right? I don't know if you did that or not. When my girls were young, we used to build a little house of cards and see how high we could get it. Um, well, sometimes our faith can be like a house of cards. And that's because some of us have a second type of faith, which is called circumstantial faith. And, and if our circumstances are good and, and good things are happening, we see God as being good. Yeah, God's good. Everything's going great. But as soon as our circumstances change and we start to have some difficult times, some people, it's easy to say, well, if God is really good, why, why is he allowing this bad thing to happen to me? And all of a sudden, their faith is determined by their circumstances. Now, most of us here, all of us, I could probably say, have had our life bumped into by things, right? And two things specifically that have tested our faith. One is unexplainable circumstances. We don't know why this is happening to us. We didn't do anything wrong, uh, but yet this is happening. We, we just can't explain why this is happening. The second is lifestyle decisions. So unexplainable circumstances, things happen that we don't know why they're happening. We, we can't find a, a reasonable explanation for it. And, and, and all of my life, I never thought that God would let this happen to me, but now this is happening to me or to my family. And, and, and I thought God would always do this and always work this way for me. But now it doesn't feel like he cares anymore because my circumstances have changed right? And when our life gets bumped into and the faith system we've built over the years doesn't work, we can start to be tempted to question God if we only have circumstantial faith. So a second thing that bumps into our life is lifestyle decisions, right? Uh, the decisions we want to make start to conflict with our faith. So for some of you, uh, something's bumped into your life that's shaken your faith, and now, uh, uh, excuse me, now your faith is starting to tumble down like a house of cards. So circumstantial faith is really fragile because at some time, something is going to bump into your life. All of you have already experienced that uh, already. You know what I'm talking about. Things happen, uh, you can't explain why, there's no reasonable logical explanation, but yet here you are in this circumstance, it's not your fault, and, and you're left thinking, well, if I, if, if I had just done this, then maybe God would have acted differently, or maybe if I had uh, did this thing, you know, God would do that, but now he's not doing what I want him to do, he's not acting the way I, I think he should act, and so, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't believe in God anymore. It's easy to find ourselves in that situation if we have circumstantial faith. So another problem with circumstantial faith is that many times in our life, our circumstances actually change. And, and then our faith becomes inconvenient or intrusive in our lives. And we look at our faith and say, you know what? This doesn't really fit anymore. I used to believe this about God. And yeah, I've read the Bible. And yeah, I really believed it. But you know, I really want to do this now. My life has changed. Things are different. I'm going to make some different decisions and they don't really line up with biblical teaching or when I pray, when I feel God leading me. So we end up changing our beliefs to fit our circumstances and our lifestyle decisions. We change how we think God should fit into our current circumstances. And after a while, the problem is when we start to change our faith based on what we want to do and the, uh, the decisions we want to make, pretty soon we're not even sure what we believe anymore and if we want to believe anything at all. I used to believe this, but then I met her. And now I don't know if I believe that anymore because I can't do this with her and yet still hold on to my faith because they're conflicting. So I've got to change one of them. And I mean, I can't change how I feel, right? We've tried that. We, you know, we can't change how we feel. So we, we'll have to change our belief in God. The problem with this type of faith is that one day something is going to hit your life and you're going to need something really solid to lean your life against that won't move. And you're going to need something that doesn't change regardless of your circumstances. And you're going to reflect on your faith and see that you've already changed it several times and you won't feel that you can really rely on your faith in God anymore. That's when people stop believing altogether. So circumstantial faith, uh, lifestyle decision faith, 
There's a third type of faith uh, that some of us hold on to, and that is the belief that we can faith God into doing what we want him to do. And we hear people say, well, if you have just have enough faith, if you just have enough pray, faith, if you just pray hard enough with enough faith, God's going to answer your prayers. And that we, we start to think like, hey, I can make God do stuff. Like God's sitting up there saying, well, I didn't want to do that, but you faithed me and now I have to, right? <laughs> well, sometimes we mix a couple of these different types of faith together and we think we can hit the jackpot with God. I go to church two times and pray three times, put a little extra money in the offering plate. That's what happened last week. I put a little extra in and wow, God answered my prayer. So now I know exactly what to do. It's like we're asking God to blow on our dice or something, right? God, I really need you to do this for me. I believe, I believe, I believe. Blow on these dice. God, I, I need a seven, I need a seven. Seven, God is good, right? It's easy to fall into that. It, it, we laugh about it, it's funny, I'm being humorous, but um, if you only remember one thing this morning, remember this, that is not faith. At least that's not biblical faith. Our faith as Christians isn't, or at least shouldn't be based on if God does something for us or not, or God acts the way that we think he should act. That's not the foundation of Christian faith. That's not God's will, that's your will. And that's not faith, that's presumption. God, I really want you to do this, and I'm gonna actually do it with or without you, so I hope you get on board with my agenda, God. That's not faith. But for some of us, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because some of us run our lives that way, or maybe at least we used to. I hope not anymore. The Christian faith that we're called to have is not, come on, God, come on, God, I need a seven. That's not, that's not the faith that we're called to have. Biblical faith is this. Biblical faith is our response to this. God, I really believe you are who you say you are, and I really believe that you are going to do what you say you can do. I trust you. So that's the biblical definition of faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith isn't wishful thinking. It's certainly not blind faith. You hear that? Christians don't have blind faith. We're never called to have blind faith. Our faith in God is, and the resurrected Christ is based on the eyewitness testimony of those who knew him and his apostles that were there at the time. They heard Jesus' teaching. Jesus said he was going to be crucified and he would raise again after three days, and he did it. And they were there and they saw that and they encountered and spent time with the resurrected Jesus. And then they wrote it down, what they saw. And then they told others. And now here we are 2,000 years later reading what they wrote. So we don't have blind faith. We believe in the testimony of those who were there and saw the resurrected Jesus Christ. Peter says, uh, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So what is our faith there for? Our faith is that we believe God is who he said he is and that he will do what he said he would do, which would give us salvations, the salvation of our soul. That is the goal of our faith. All right, this is actually a three-part series, or four, if you will. John preached on faith last week, so if you're here, this is part two of a four-part series. Or if you missed last week, this is part one of a three-part series. How about that? And I, it's kind of, as I was going through this, it was kind of hard to know where should I stop and where should I pick up. So I'm going to stop here uh, for now. I hope that you'll come back next week and, and certainly two weeks from now as we conclude this. Please pray with me. Father, uh, it's easy to have unbiblical faith. It's easy to put our faith in a system. It's easy for us to just have circumstantial faith. 
or faith based on our lifestyle decisions. But that's not the type of faith you're calling us to have. You're calling us to trust you, to put our faith in you, that you will do what you said you would do, which is forgive us for our sins through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father, for myself and for each person here this morning, for anybody worshiping with us online, God, would you please help us to trust you, to put our faith in you and in your son, Jesus Christ. We ask this, Father, in his name. Amen.